Hey everyone, it's Eric with FirearmTutorials.com and today we're going to talk about my kaboomed Noveski rifle. So, um, this was, uh, you know, uh, and it, I got a good deal on this rifle and it was the cheapest Noveski I own, so I'll start with that. But I will say that uh, it was an 18 inch gun, you know, so it was kind of a novelty thing, just uh, an SPR gun essentially that I was going to shoot 77 grain stuff out of. So that's essentially what I did. I didn't put a whole lot of rounds through it, probably 200 total. And uh, to make a long story short, the last magazine of the last, the last round in the last magazine of the day was when the kaboom occurred, right? So I had already started to pack stuff up. Um, I was basically just shooting on paper, trying to get some, see what kind of groups I could get with a certain optic. Here's some pictures of the rig I was shooting that day, some of the ammo, right? So mostly factory ammo. I was trying to see what the difference was between the remanufactured and the new Black Hills stuff, you know, amongst getting groups on paper and stuff with a different optic. So I pretty much finished all of that. And then I had my steel out at hundred yards and I was like, you know what, let me just put a, ma put a, round, a couple mags through and just try and get double taps. So that's just what I did. I grabbed a 20 round mag. Was it empty or did it have a round in it? I don't know. Um, I was also shooting, you know, a couple other guns that day. So business as usual, you know, I had, it was a 20 round mag and I put maybe, I don't know, an arbitrary amount, 12, 15 rounds in it or something. Bang, 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 you know, enjoying myself. Very last round and I was shooting suppressed. Very last round, bang right? Scares the hell out of me. Um, I was shooting from a bench, so the magazine blew out, right? Here is the follower, or what's left of it. I think there's, yeah, three pieces of it. Magazine blew out. Follower was cracked inside the magazine. Uh, there was a little bit of blood on my arm, which ended up being, I think, just powder burns, because there was no, no, no cuts or anything. But initially, I didn't know what happened. And we always see these reactions from people when they kaboom a gun they kind of just like jump back essentially and that's kind of what I did but granted I was shooting you know sitting at a bench so you know it's one of those things and then even after it happened I couldn't tell what had really happened I knew that the magazine was blown out and um, the the gun was out of battery right so here's a look at essentially the, the pictures I took at the range like right after it happened and I couldn't get the bolt to move. And by that point, like I said, I was, I was done anyways. And so I just packed up and figured I'd mess with it when I got home. Um, so, and, and again, initially I still didn't know what happened. I was wondering, you know, did I have, the, these were my hand loads that I was shooting at the very end. Like, did I overcharge it? And I'm thinking, I mean, I don't see how that could be because I'm like, I'm really meticulous in my hand loading and I've got a lot of fail safes built in so that that can't happen. So, but that was in the back of my mind and I'm like, there's, there's no way like, yeah, granted it's an 18 inch barrel. There's going to be more pressure and this and that. And so whatever, I got it home. I was able to separate the upper and lower receiver. So the lower is still good. I've actually taken it apart and it's completely stripped to be Cerakoted. This is what's left of the upper receiver. It turned into kind of just a project. You see, I just practiced Cerakoting it and I was practicing with some letter punches and stuff like that. But as you can see, I ended up just cutting it because it was bulged out anyways. It was bulged, the, the uh, dust cover wouldn't shut. I was like, this, this upper is toast anyways. So I just went at it with a Dremel because I wanted to leave whatever was in the barrel completely intact. Now what I did, is I took a cleaning rod, this is the barrel, the 18 inch barrel, and the cleaning rod, when I stuck it down and then measured from where it came out, it only went down 14 inches. And I was like, well, I mean, a 223 case, you know, isn't that long. Like some something happened there. Like there, there's something going on in the barrel. So I wanted to see if I could get the, the bolt carrier out without, you know, ripping it apart and kind of disturbing whatever was in here because I was really interested in what it was. Make a long story short, so I cut it off and then I got to the point where I had the barrel off and the the uh, bolt, bolt and bolt, the, the bolt and bolt carrier just kind of hanging. So I ended up just 
ripping it out, which then ripped the, you know, small part of the case, the ejector just ripped the corner of the case off, as you can see here. And I was like, all right, I have no choice then, but to just bang it out the end of the barrel. So it surprisingly wasn't that difficult to bang through the other side. And this is what I found. So here's the case, right? You can see where essentially the pressure just blew out the back, right? Takes the path of least resistance. But we have a blackout case here, right? And this is what was in the barrel. So this essentially is a 125 grain spear 308 bullet that was essentially swaged into a 223 or 556 barrel. So it's a nice little uh, knickknack there, but so what really confused me here is at some point when I was reloading, I put a 300 blackout case in a 556 case gauge and it doesn't fit. So I thought, you know, even if you do sneak a blackout round in there, it's not going to chamber, you know, gun will be out of battery. You'll just rack it and realize, oh, I had a blackout round in there. After talking to some other people, essentially because I was shooting, if it was maybe the first round in the magazine, that would have happened. But since it was the last round and the carrier was rebounding, it had enough force to essentially shove it and I guess set the bullet back in the case so that it did go into complete battery and then fire. So that's where we're at. Like I said, the lower, this was broken, the magazine catch. Here's a look at the bolt, right? So basically blew the extractor off, mangled it pretty good. Um, you see this doesn't fit tight anymore. So this is obviously garbage. This is the bottom of the carrier. This came out the magwell when the kaboom happened. Here's the other part of the mag catch and that's about it. So here's the, the bolt carrier. So I, this is Cerakote Elite. I ended up just using this again as just a practice piece to paint. So, um, you know, minus that part that's sheared off, I think the bolts probably still would inspect, but obviously it's not usable. So the barrel, um, I'll let you guys weigh in on this. Multiple people have told me not to reuse this barrel because of micro fractures and whatever. Um, I did talk to a guy, um, the, the black rifle arms guy that you saw that had the, the machine gun lowers and the piston setups. He's probably the most knowledgeable guy about the AR platform that I know. And I talked to him about it and he said, honestly, your barrel should be fine. Check the headspace on it. He's like, because if you have a situation like this, it's going to take the path of least resistance. Like, yes, it did swage the bullet down in here. Um, I mean, we know that these bullets are fairly soft, right? Um, and then it just blew the rest out the back. The lower is still intact, completely in spec. So I'm thinking I'm going to rebuild it with this barrel. I have an 18 inch Daniel defense barrel as well, but, um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm still open to suggestions and, uh, that's it guys. So, you know, shit happens. And, uh, I'm glad it was one of the cheapest rifles I own. Like I said, I got a good deal on it. The thing was 1300 bucks, which for a Noveski was a good deal. And, um, I mean, I switched out the trigger and the stock and some other stuff, but that's kind of where we're at. And now I know that, uh, you can absolutely sneak a blackout round in there and kaboom the gun. So, I will say though, when this initially happened and I started Googling, like you can see minus where I cut it with a Dremel here, that it's in fairly decent shape. Like I said, it was bowed. I knew it was definitely not going to be reusable. But when I Googled, you know, 300 blackout in 5.56 or 300 blackout kaboom or something, the pictures that I saw of essentially people that had did the same thing. The whole receiver was blown out. The sides were blown out. You know, luckily I didn't get hurt and or anything like that. But I don't know if it's, that's a testament to like the quality of the Noveski stuff that, you know, this receiver is so well made that it didn't kaboom. Is it luck of the draw? Is it that, you know, the ammo I was shooting wasn't, you know, as uh, didn't contain as high a pressure as maybe the other ones. I don't know. So that's the info I have for you guys. Wanted to share it. And, um, you know, I'll give you uh, another look at when I end up rebuilding the gun. I said I completely 
stripped it and it's going to be Cerakoted. So thanks for watching.